My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there was only one time in the life of our Prophet wasallam that an eclipse took place. And this eclipse it took place when our Prophet wasallam was around 61 years old. And it coincided with one of the most tragic events in the life of our Prophet wasallam, Because we learned that at the age of around 60, our Prophet was blessed to become a father for one more time. And this was through Maria al qibtiyya And Maria al qibtiyya gave birth to Ibrahim. Our Prophet as is reported in Sahih Bukhari, that the Sahaba said one day the Prophet came and his face was shining bright. His face was beaming. And he said, Allah bless me with a child last night and I shall name him after my father Ibrahim. And they would see Ibrahim with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would take him to the masjid and they saw the happiness in his face that they had not seen because our Prophet Sallallahu had not played with a, a child for, for his own child for many decades before this. All of the other children, as I said, already passed away. He had buried his own daughters, Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum. And as for in Mecca, he had at least one, maybe two sons. We're not sure whether there were two sons or one son for sure, Al-Qasim, and maybe another uh, was there as well. And three daughters all of them have passed away. Now he has Ibrahim. And lo and behold, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had willed that Ibrahim is not going to live. So Allah willed that the process and be tested one more time. He enjoy the fatherhood. Ibrahim lived for a year and a half. And then at that age, Ibrahim fell sick. And again in Sahih Bukhari, we learn our process and brought Ibrahim to the masjid and he was wheezing and coughing and you could tell that the child was on the, thro- the throes of death that he was wheezing and coughing and can you imagine the pain and the sahaba they saw the process and cry as he's holding his son Ibrahim in his hands and Ibrahim is wheezing his last and our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam knows that he's about to pass away and he says inna ala firaqika ya ibrahim wal mahzunun verily ibrahim at your death we are very grieved we're very said that you're about to die and when Ibrahim died Ibrahim passed away then our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un inna lillahi ma ata wa lillahi ma akhadh that to Allah belongs everything he has the right to take he has the right to to give and we will not say anything except what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as he is grieving and the sahaba are grieving lo and behold Allah willed that at that time the only time in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sun eclipsed, not even the moon, the sun. It was a full solar eclipse, a full solar eclipse. There is nothing more magnificent, more spectacular than the covering of the sun in the middle of the day. And right when the Sahaba are crying and the Prophet is crying, the sun itself has become shaded. And of course, the rumors spread. How could they not spread? When all of Medina is crying, then why shouldn't the rumor spread that even the skies are sad at the death of Ibrahim? Even the sun is crying. Even the celestial objects are showing their huzn, their grief at the death of the son of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The world and all that is in it is sad with the sadness of the Prophet. Why shouldn't they believe this? It's common sense to believe. But our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. On the day his son died, cannot but teach Tawheed. He cannot but preach Islam. We don't believe in superstitions. We are not a people that believe in bizarre rituals and mythologies. No, we are people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the day he buries his son, he's barely come back from the graveyard and he calls all of the people to the masjid. A crier is sent, As-salatu jami'ah, as-salatu jami'ah, come. This is what you say when you want people to come to the masjid and you don't give adhan. Adhan is only given for the five salawat. For other than the five salawat, when they have to come, you say, As-salatu jami'ah. So, As-salatu jami'ah, everybody comes. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam then led them in a long salah, a long prayer. And as Aisha and others said, it was as if he recited all of Qadr al-Baqarah, the, the, the size of Surah al-Baqarah. And he did not finish until the eclipse.
eclipse itself disappeared. And as I said, this is indeed the sunnah, but it is difficult for us in this land and when we have work tomorrow to follow that sunnah. And of course, by the way, the salah and the khutbah is sunnah. It is not wajib. It is good to attend and it is sunnah and it is not something that is wajib. So he prayed as long as the eclipse was in session. Then when the eclipse finished, then he stood up and he gave a khutbah. And in that khutbah, he said that beautiful phrase, إِنَّ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ آيَتَانِ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَا يَنْكَسِفَانِ لِمَوْتِ أَحَدٍ وَلَا لِحَيَاتِهِ The sun and the moon are of the miracles of Allah. They are the creation of Allah. Their eclipse is independent of the death and the life of anybody on this earth. And I have said before and I will say it again, this one incident, wallahi, is one of the most powerful incidents that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was a true prophet. as sadiqul amin as sadiqul amin Had he, astaghfirullah, or anybody been a false prophet, had any person in his shoes who was a false prophet, this happens to him. What an amazing story. What an amazing mythology to extract, to concoct. Let the people speak. It's not even as if he was spreading the rumor. It's not even as if he was saying, look, even the skies are crying because I am sad. No, he had to speak the truth. As-Sadiq al-Ameen, As-Sadiq al-Masduq. He has to say the truth. So he calls the people and he says, the eclipse has nothing to do with the life and death of anybody in this world. These are of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the sun or the moon eclipses, then sallu wa kabbiru wa saddiqu, saddiqu, that tasaddiqu, that pray and say takbir and give charity until the, the eclipse goes away. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during that salah, during that salah, it was a very emotional time because realize brothers and sisters that before we had the advent of modern science, nobody knew when an eclipse was coming. And to see the eclipse, people did not understand what is going on. And they felt this is the impending doom. They felt something evil is about to happen. They felt the punishment of Allah. They felt it might be the day of judgment coming close. And this fear that struck all of humanity, there's nothing wrong with this fear because this fear connects you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you become cognizant of your own mortality, of your own sins, of your own of your own, if you like, minuscule existence in front of the majesty and grandeur of Allah's creation. So even the Sahaba, they were indeed terrified. And there's nothing wrong with that terror because it is linked with Allah and the punishment of Allah. And our Prophet ﷺ said, when you have this fear, when you have this terror, then stand up in salah, say dhikr, make dua, give charity. These things, they are the things that cleanse your sins away. They are the ones that calm down. They are the ones that remove the anger of Allah subhanahu and in that salah, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he took a step back and he took a step forward. And he explained later on that while I was praying, Allah showed me heaven and hell. He showed me Jannah and Jahannam. So when I saw Jannah, I took a step forward wanting to pluck the, the grapes from Jannah. And if I had plucked those grapes, then one bunch of grapes would have fed you all until the day of judgment. If I wanted to, I could bring it here. And then you would have had food until the day of judgment. One bunch would have fed all of you until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And then before he could do that, Qadr Allah, Allah willed of course that these grapes should not be here. That's for the next life. Then before he could do that, Jahannam was presented. And our Prophet ﷺ went back. Because he could feel or he could see the, 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 the Jahannam. So he took a step back. And in that khutbah, he said to the Sahaba, لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ If you know what I know, لَضَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا وَلَا بَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا You would laugh very little and you would weep very much. And when he said this, the Sahaba, they began weeping the entire masjid, so much so that the masjid was overcome with sobs, so much so that the Sahaba to cover their mouths and their faces in their cloaks and their garments out of the sobbing because they could see there was a very emotional day that day. The Prophet has lost his son. Now he leads them in a salah two, three hours. Can you imagine his qira'ah, how they must have been moved? He himself is seeing Jannah and Jahannam. Then he gives a powerful khutbah. So that day was imprinted in the memory of the Sahaba. 
Sahaba. And this is the only time the eclipse happened. From this, our scholars have derived that there's something called Salatul Kusuf and Salatul Khusuf with the Kaf and Akha. Salatul Kusuf is for when the sun eclipses, Salatul Khusuf when the moon eclipses. And they are prayed in the same manner, except of course the Kusuf is in the daytime and Khusuf is at night. And my dear brothers and sisters, unfortunately, one of the problems of modern science, and this is a problem, is that modern science unfortunately has caused many of us to lose the awe that we should have when it comes to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact of the matter is that even if we know there's going to be an eclipse, and even if we have a hundred thousand pictures, and even if we can see it on YouTube and on our iPhones, and we know exactly when it will begin and end, this does not take away from the majesty, from the beauty, from the splendor, from the absolute amazement of this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, the sun and the moon are of the most miraculous creations of Allah. وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ بِحُسْبَان Allah says, the sun and the moon have been placed in order. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ Of his miracles is the night and the day and the sun and the moon. Wallahi brothers and sisters, to think about it, it is mind-boggling. These massive objects, this ball of fire and gas and, and helium hurtling through space at tens of thousands of kilometers an hour. Tens of thousands. And it is going on its own axis. And around it are going so many planets. And around the planets are going so many moons. And yet, their coordination is so precise that... We do not time the eclipses. We do not time the sun and the moon. Time comes from the movement of the sun and the moon. Think about it. Our time comes from the precision of the movements of the sun and the moon. Where do we get the 24 hours? Where do we get the day? Where do we get the night? Where do we get our seconds? Our time is based upon the precision of these massive objects hurtling through space. And that's what Allah says, وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ بِحُسْبَانِ The sun and the moon, they are in a precise orbit. كُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ لَلشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَنْ تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرُ وَلَا اللَّيْلُ سَابِقُ النَّهَارُ The sun is not going to overtake the moon, nor will the day come before the night. Each one is in its own orbit. Who has the power to control these magnificent, huge creations? Who has the power to coordinate these structures such that we know exactly the timing of them and we extract our day and our month and our year from the precision of their movements? Wallahi, that is indeed Al-Khaliq, Al-Alim, Al-Qadir, Ala Kulli Shay'in Qadir. These creations around us, they should bring us in awe. How impunity, how, how insignificant we are, how puny we are in comparison to the creation.